All right, let's take a look at triggers and bindings for Azure Functions. We talked about them before, but let's give them a little bit more attention. So triggers and bindings let you avoid hard coding access to other services and abstracting away boilerplate code, keeping your functions lean. Because the idea is that you won't have to uh, add that code into your functions. So uh, here is our uh, graphic, which represents a function. We have input bindings, output bindings. We have a trigger there. So what is a trigger? A trigger is a specific type of event which causes the function to run. It defines how a function is invoked and a function must only have one trigger. Uh, triggers can have associated data, which is often provided as the payload of the function. And you know, as we saw uh, in the introduction that we can have multiple sources of inputs that, that get added there. In this example here, we have uh, HTTP, but we're bringing in, in data from uh, blob storage as well. Um, and obviously the main trigger, uh, which HTTP is an input as well. So you can have additional inputs at the same time. Then we'll take a look here is what is a binding. Um, and so uh, my arrow is a little bit messed up, but the idea is bindings define if your function is connected to another service. So we have input bindings and output bindings. So the data from bindings is provided to functions as parameters. Bindings are optional and a function can have multiple input and output bindings, uh, optional but often used, uh, which we'll find out. But let's take a look at what supported bindings are in the next video.